everybody welcome to my channel I'm creative Katie Karen Burchill today we are going to take a three dollar thrift store find and turned it into a DIY art journal thrift store is a great source for journals and items that you can turn into art journals and this time when I went to the thrift store I found this what it's called an everything journal and it's pristine now when you are looking for a book to turn into an art journal there are a couple things that I look for I look for nice smooth pages that are not too thin I know we can glue pages together I prefer not to do that. I want pages that are smooth, that are somewhat substantial, feel like maybe manila tag. Sometimes you can get recipe binders. I prefer ones where the pages come out as opposed to bound like this. But if it's bound like this, I am looking to see that it is stitched. So when you're looking to see if it's stitched, I'm just going to zoom in. You're just looking for some stitching and it's going to stitch in the different signatures. Now the signatures are just kind of like mini books that are in there and they could be six pages, eight pages. You can see here, hopefully you can see, we have stitching. And that means the way it's bound is going to help Keep it together if I rip out some pages. Now, talk about ripping out pages. If I don't rip out pages, what's going to happen when I start creating on these pages? The pages bulk up because of the mediums and the layers that we add to it, and you will break the spine. So what you want to do, as hard as it is to do, is remove some of the pages starting at the back or the front doesn't matter what you want to do is figure out how many pages find a signature so here is the stitching and if I go here I can see here is the signature so this has three pages that are folded together so you want to remove one third to one half of the pages. And you can do that simply by, you don't wanna break the threads, just pulling it out and then that will release the other sheet. And you just, again, go gently. This takes a little bit of time. Now these pages I can collect, staple together, becomes a notepad. I can repurpose them. However, so I took out, there were six in this one, so I'm gonna look for the next signature. And this, again, you just take your time. I'm gonna find, there's the thread. And go up. I'm just going to remove the pages. And then you can easily see how many. So sometimes I might re remove two, sometimes I might remove one page, one third or two thirds. And then I'm just going to continue. I always find it easiest to find the thread, the stitching. There's the stitching. And remove. And then we go to the next signature. So to recap, every signature, on the one signature, I'm taking one page out. This is one page, both sides come out. And then on the next signature, I will take 
two pages out. I'm looking for the string, the stitching. There's the stitching. So I took out one last time. Now I want to take out two. Find the stitching. And it does get easier once you get going here. There's the stitching. And if you inadvertently take two out twice in a row, it's not a problem. The goal is to shrink this down so that when you thicken it with the mediums that we're going to add, it will fill the spine, but won't be too much. So there were 104 sheets in this book. And I'm talking just half, 104 sheets. And I took out 40 of them, 64 are left. Now I can take out more if as I'm going, I'm finding that it's bulking up too much. I can go where the stitching is and remove some of those. But for now, I think this is a good plan. Now the tassel here, I am going to get rid of because it's just going to get in the way of my creating so I do not need that. Now, before we come back to this, all of these pages that I've taken out, there are were a few in the front and the back that were just note pages. So I'm just gonna staple that and be done with it. These ones that have this to-do list, today I'm grateful for, reflection, self-care tip, affirmation, I've got, 40 pages of this, what I can do is just use my paper cutter, cut off the tattered sides. I can bind this in some way or just staple it and use it the way it was intended. So this cover is pretty nice and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to finish the cover and I'm gonna delay that till the end. But I, in case I just want to leave it the way it is and maybe put a focal image here or do something like that, I want to make sure that this stays clean. So I want to make, give it a protective cover. And I'm going to use either like the brown paper from, you know, those Amazon packages that I collect, or you could use a brown paper bag you want something fairly thick. So what I'm going to do is make a cover to slide on or tape on to the front part and the back part. So I'm just going to take this and cut it the size of my journal with some overlap so that I can tape it into the inside. So I'm not doing anything too terribly specific, no direct measurements. What I want to do is line this up. I don't want, I'm not going to be covering the spine or I can deal with that later, but I, I don't want to worry about the bend right now. So I'm just going to have that a little bit of overlap. You can see how, you know, not precise measurement. This isn't a permanent cover, so I'm not going to have to worry about it. I'm going to line that up in there. So if you fold this, figuring this out as I go, fold this. A little bit more. Let's just see how this works. And just tape it down. We'll
And then I'm just going to put a little bit of tape here. So it's just covering. that, keeping the mess at bay. I know I am a messy, messy creator. <laughs> so we have that, and then we're going to duplicate that on the back side as well. You don't want too much, but I will link a video where I took an old recipe binder that had wonderful cards in it, and I will show how I prepped that one. So no matter what you find, because you never know what you're gonna find at the thrift store. It's not like you can go there and order up <laughs> exactly what you want, but this was like a no-brainer. It was like, I am going to use this. So I just want to now, let's just say I want to cover that spine. I'm just going to do that now. A little bit over here and a little bit over there. Just, you know, because again, I know me. I am a messy creator. Are you? Let me know. I'm sure there's a lot of us out there. I marvel at some of the YouTube creators that everything is so pristine. So there we have it. It's basically somewhat protected. So now let's talk about prepping the pages. So I'm going to test putting paint on here. And I'm going, my plan is to use this as one page. Instead of two pages, I want to do it as a full page spread. And roughly this is about 12 inches by a little over eight. So eight by 12. So let's see how it takes just paint. What happens to the pages when I do just paint? Let's just pick a couple of colors here. And I'm using some plastic cutting boards so I don't get paint on. Now, raw paint on here, it's a little bit difficult to keep moving. So I'm just adding a little bit of water and seeing what happens. Adding water helps. We're going to see how much the pages buckle. Now we've got the text coming through, but really, if that bothers you, we will use gesso and I'll show you that. But I am going to mix a little bit of gesso in with these colors and that's just going to give me more variation. You can use the white acrylic paint as well. All right, this is just your first layer. And I'm just experimenting, as should you, with the papers that you have in whatever journal that you sourced at the thrift store, right? So you're not going to find exactly what I have at all. So you need to be prepared for how to test it out and how to make those decisions. So with this, just adding a little bit of water 
it seems to be taking the paint fairly well. So that's a win. And this is going to tell me how I need to prepare the pages. If I can get away with just putting raw paint, win. Then I have an option. If I have to gesso them, then I will. But this is the testing the waters. So you can go on each page and just put a layer of paint down. on here and you've set the color scheme for the page. So if you worry about that, you can just target it and just put a little bit of gesso just to knock it back that little bit more if you want to. Again, it's up to you because again, we're going to be putting lots and lots of layers there. So I can just come back once that's dry and I'm not waiting and just put color on top of the gesso a little bit. And there we have that page. And if you're doing, you know, a stash builder or just one day you want to throw down color and do several pages in your book, then give it a dry with the heat tool. So we'll come back and see how the pages are. So the pages are reasonably flat, so I could put the paint on that way. Now, the other thing you're going to want to do when you're in a book to keep it kind of balanced is work from the back and from the front from the front and the back. So another way that you can put, prepare the pages is use a brayer and some white gesso and you can brayer on the gesso. It's the fastest way of getting the gesso onto the page. So once again, I've used the plastic cutting boards. Now this is going to bulk up the page a little bit and you'll be able to maybe do a little bit more wet medium on here without worrying. This also gives some lovely texture. And so this is knocking back whatever's on the page and giving a coat or some gesso. Now, how precise or exact do you wanna be with the gesso? How much coverage do you want? Up to you. I want to just add a little bit of substantiation to it on some of the pages. So, you know, this is a perfect thing to do when, you know, you wanna create, but you're not feeling particularly creative. You don't have any inspiration. So this is something you can do. And just the idea of brushing and working on your art journal helps you. I, I find it makes me creative. So again, once that's on, I'm going to dry it. You do not want to get these pages too terribly wet. It is just paper. When you're drying, you can dry from the top, but flip the page and dry from behind as well. That'll keep the page straighter. So piggybacking off of that in another way of putting color on here and maybe prepping the pages a little bit. Now you could do this like in a stash builder, you know, one day. Another way is to brayer on the paint. So brayered beginnings. I love um, 
just brayering on paint. And brayering puts on a very thin layer, but it's a really nice effect. It gives um, kind of a textured look to it. Covers. I don't think I would be doing anything with um, acrylic inks or liquid liquid mediums in this book. I'd save that for a different journal, okay? I should have been going both ways. Now I wanna add a color, so I'm gonna add some Naples yellow. And this is already dry. So here we're just applying color, we're prepping the page, keeping it light and easy. What I like to do after I put my two colors is just a thin layer of white. Now you're going to stencil over this. You're going to collage over this. Maybe you're going to do some stamping. And then you can go back and add more color if you want. If you don't like an area like here, it's a little dark, I can just knock that back. Okay, the goal isn't to make this perfect at this stage. The goal is to get a coat of paint on here that isn't overly wet. You want to avoid wetness. And again, I'm going to dry. So there's the third way. So we have just gesso. We have brayering on colors. We have using the makeup sponge. And let's do another way here. Okay, so we can put a napkin down. So I have this one. This was something I bought actually to use. A napkin, what you want to do, make sure you take off the two excess plies. This you can save. And you're going to want to glue that down. And you can use Mod Podge, Decoupage. I like using Fluid Matte Medium, Liquitex. You can use Polyvine, um, Varnish. So I wanna make sure I get, really get in the center because this is a book closure and right to the edges. Now I can use the brayer to make good adhesion. You can put a piece of saran wrap on top. So this is just giving all over color. I'm going to add gesso and different things. This just will add a little bit of substantiation to, or it'll make the page a little bit more substantial. I'm gonna take that out, put that over here. just so don't try to do the whole thing and here I didn't do any I didn't knock back the text that was there you do get some wrinkles I love that in my art that's just <laughs> bonus texture
And now I'm just going to put a layer on top, being mindful that we know napkins get fragile when wet. But since it's the first layer, even if you rip a hole in there, it isn't so horrible. So this is actually, we've got layer, we have the layer of the uh, matte medium, which is like a layer of gesso kind of in prepping it. And you have the napkin. So we've added kind of two layers here. So before heat tooling, I'm gonna take out the plastic. Ooh, I guess I got Some stick on here so being careful but you know what there's nothing that you can't fix so I'm gonna quickly dry this you don't so mindful of not too much liquid and maybe with the matte medium when I'm doing this I needed to dry a little bit before I applied the second coat and that would prevent. The page is very soft now, it's very wet. So if I was doing it again, when I apply a napkin, I would put the matte medium, put the first layer, give it a dry, and then do the top. So once it's completely dry, just turn it over and cut off the excess check the edges, make sure everything is perfectly adhered, add a little more matte medium or whatever your adhesive is if it's not perfectly adhered. And remember, it's just the first layer. Now, I don't like doing too many first layers. I find that a little constrictive. So, but it is nice sometimes to have something that already has been started and you know, I'll flip through and I will get inspired by whatever I put down here. So, and it makes for a quick, easy art journal session where some days you just simply don't have the hour or whatever it takes to do a complete art journal page. But when the first layer is done, eh, that saves you, that say cuts off time. So there we have this. Now this added a, a significant amount of bulk and you can see already with the few pages that we've done, how it's bulking up the page. So you can see why I took out 50% of the pages. Now, another way that you can add, start prepping the page that's quick, easy, and doesn't wet the page is by using a key card and scraping it on. So I've got some magenta here. So I am just going to and again, I need to put this in and that in. Now this is a thin layer of paint and it's a very quick dry. So you're not adding a lot of moisture. So that's gonna be very gentle for your journal. Now, if you have a, if you were lucky enough to find a journal that's actually Manila tag or really sub, substantial, you don't have to worry. But in all likelihood, you're going to find something like this: that the paper is the substrate's just a little, a little less than perfect. Let's say it's not mixed media paper. So I'm going to pick another color that I know is going to go with this. Let's use Bright Aqua. Now, if you don't, I mean, you can use a key card. 
you can also use a The word's escaping me. So you can play around with these and decide which way, which one you like the best. And I'm thinking I just want to add some dark Prussian blue here. So that's what I'm going to do. I like it better with the key card. But you'll find a little bit of paint. Goes a long way. We don't want anything to waste, to go to waste. What, when you're doing with the key card like this, and even brayering to some degree, it's very organic. You're, you're not really in control, but it is quick, it is easy, and you may get something you don't unexpect it. I don't like that big blue blob there. <laughs> so I'm taking the white and I'm just kind of knocking it back. I've got some, actually this is just gesso on my page. A little bit of that pink in here. Ooh, I'm loving the movement there. But again, it's a very dry application. We're not adding a lot of water, and that's really key when you're using less than perfect substrates. If you stick to applications where you're putting on minimal paint and it's drying very quick so the paper's not getting very wet, you're going to spend less time using the heat tool and drying it. So it's up to you. Now here we put napkin. I would also put tissue paper or maybe rice paper. But I would not put scrapbook paper. This is thicker. We took out half the pages. If I was to cover this completely with scrapbook paper, even my gel prints and collage papers, what would happen is we're just adding that bulk back in. So I wouldn't do that on a regular basis. I, if I wanted to put some scrapbook paper or I might put rip strips of it instead of the overall coverage. I don't, I need to be mindful of adding that bulk in. So I'm gonna pretty much limit it to Maybe a napkin, because that's fairly thin. Tissue paper, maybe rice papers. So to recap, we've covered the front just to keep paint off. We've applied gesso with a brayer to prepare the pages on some of them. Quick, easy, using the brayer is the quickest way. Using a makeup sponge 
using your colors with adding a little gesso. Napkin, applied napkin tissue paper. We have another napkin here. This napkin's a little thicker. That's adding considerable weight. Scraping it on with a key card or a palette knife. Brayering paints on with or without gesso. So I have a few pages started in my journal. I've marked where the front is so that I don't turn it upside down. That happens on a regular basis. Off camera, I got out my wooden stamps and I stamped thrift store repurposed journal, added a dragonfly. This is a temporary cover, but I thought it might as well look good while I'm working on it. So now I can create on one of the pages that have been already started, or I can go to a blank page and start it. And remember, I'm going to kind of try to work front of the journal, back of the journal. I can even start doing some in the middle. And that way it will lie flat. As you can see, how even just those few pages have added bulk. So go to your thrift store, source out, look for old journals. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of writing in them. Recipe binders, um, they have great cards. Pages that are light, you want a good weight of paper that is going to handle what you're throwing at it and then test it out and see how does it take the various um, color mediums. Each one is going to be different and you have to adapt to what you have. So I had an idea about the leftover papers. I was thinking, okay, I could hole punch them and I can use them because there's a lot of them. And, you know, maybe I will journal with this. I might will give that a try. So I want to coil it in some way. So I thought hole punch and I have those little rings. And then I thought that I have something very similar to the Happy Planner. This one was actually from Staples, a different but the same punch. So I cut a couple covers out of some scrapbook paper that I had. And I am just going to put this in here and punch them. Not too thick. This is an Arc brand that's Staples, which is a stationary store. So I'm just going to punch all of these and make a bit of a journal with them. So nothing again, nothing is going to waste. So those pages that we ripped out are still going to be used. So, you know, half of the book I'm going to do use it the way it was intended and half of the book I've turned into a art journal. So in, I'm going to be journaling in two different ways. This one is like the written word and then artistically. And the cover, okay, so this one I'm, that's the back cover and the front. So I'm just going to put these in.
step by step by step. So there you have it. I have my, so I have two journals. I have the one the way it was intended. Now we've got rounded edges. Let me see, we have a solution for that too. I love when I get to use so many of my tools. <laughs> I can take that off and do a fancy cover if I want. And there we have it. So I turned one book into two journals, an artistic journal and a meditation journal. And if I don't use this, I can turn this into another art journal that's coiled with the, um, with the punch.